Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of Unboxed, Watched, and Reviewed. So, what movie are we doing this week? Well, let's take a look way back and find out. Hi everybody, look at my funny hair. This was a monumental day because it's the first time I ever used a hair dryer and it's the first time I ever said Flashback Land. Welcome to Flashback Land. A new set and a new fucked up hairstyle. So, here we go. This package came to me from iOffer from the same seller who got me the Auto Mule DVDs. Winter Heat. Now, I stumbled across this one on my own. This is an adult film starring Jamie Gillis. Probably known as many other things, I don't know. I just did a search for Jamie Gillis and got Winter Heat. So this movie didn't have a box until a few months later when I made one. How professional is this shit? This is like really good. Jamie Gillis was perhaps the filthiest man in porn. Watch him live up to his perverted reputation in this plot-based obscene classic. I wrote that before I even knew what this was, so uh, let's hope he lives up to it. Are you guys ready to start Winter Heat? So I know nothing about Winter Heat. It could be a just a regular porno, or it could be something fucked up and violent, which I hope it is. You know, otherwise it could just be people in the winter heating each other up with their cum. You know, that's Winter Heat. All right, play. Sombrero Films presents a very green screen and a man walking down a hill in snow. This is very green. It has a very green filter on it. Jamie Gillis, Judy Watt, Mickey Hum, Jennifer Jordan. And there they are, trying to make their way down a hill in the woods. Oh, they're making their way to a cabin. Jamie Gillis is in front and he's like, Hey guys, I found a fuck shack. They're like, oh, we're gonna go get our orange pussies eaten in there. Once they get through all the pubes, they're gonna get to a bunch of orange flaps. They're all in a cabin and Jamie Gillis said, let's lay down for a while. And he's taking the socks off some girl. It's still very green. Well, I love the dialogue, and while this guy was telling the story about being raped, the girl took out Jamie Gillis's Willis and is sucking it. They're telling dirty stories. She's just jacking off Jamie Gillis, who's like, oh. She's talking like, oh, in San Francisco this one time. His face is right down by Jamie Gillis's Willis, and he's talking to the camera now. So there are a bunch of storytellers who have got lost in the winter? No, that's not it. These are actually the villains. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm gonna shut up so I can try to figure this shit out. And right in the forefront is Jamie getting his dick sucked. And these guys are just talking with Jamie in between them and this girl. He's talking about a wheelchair now, rolling and rolling. I guess they just kind of segued into fucking the girl. I'm a little out of it today, and the cum is a little out of his dick because it's dribbling on her face. I was gonna say this song is borderline okay, but no, it's not. I just don't like it at all. I'd rather listen to the fucking soundtrack to American Beauty. He's stabbing her in the face with his erect penis. Oh, they're leaving the cabin into the green outdoors. Oh, now there's an old car driving down a street and I bet they're gonna pick up our four heroes. Do you think they're going fast enough? What is this, driver's ed? Who's in that car? Three girls got out of the car. Well, they're outside of some big green house and they're standing there and the girl is going up to the front door. Inside, there's a woman and the girl's knocking on the window. She goes, hi. Jamie Gillis is up against the side of the house. Is this gonna be rough? Oh, he just stepped in the doorway and walked in. He's like, hi there. She said, I think my friend's sleeping. He said, call her down. And she left to go get her friend and Jamie grabbed her. And she said, I thought you wanted me to get my friends. And he said, call for them. And the girl walked out and she's like, who are these people? And Jamie's being all aggressive and weird. So they just invaded this home and they're gonna rape these girls. They're like, what do you want? They're like, food. And this girl's like, you came barging in here, Jesus Christ. They're not like screaming or anything. They're just kind of pissed off. And this girl's like, we'll make eggs and coffee. And the girl said, I gotta pee. Now Jamie's in the kitchen with this other girl and she's backing up, pushing her. And she said, do you want some oatmeal? So they're at the house at the edge of the park and Jamie's making the girl take her clothes off. He's slapping her, eating the oatmeal. He said, take off your pants. She, she's taking her pants off very slowly, more slowly than that car was going. I mean, she's slowly taking her goddamn pants off. Now he's folding them. Like he's gonna go put them back on the shelf. Take your shoes off. All right, give me five minutes. 
he just took a spoonful of the oatmeal and said, here you go. She said, I don't want it, and he smacked her in the mouth with it. And he's smearing the oatmeal all around her face and shoving the spoon in her mouth. And just got more and whacked her in the face. I said, I'm gonna stay here, you know. She's got oatmeal all over her naked body. He just grabbed her crotch, was shoving his fingers in, saying, you eat like a pig, you know that? And he's just molesting this woman. Meanwhile, the girl who answered the door is being forced to fellatiate the storyteller guy, or the guy who pretended to have a microphone. He said, you wanna S my C? S my C. This is a PG-13 rated episode. Get all the cock you want, bitch. I'm trying to make this PG-13. I love Jamie's dialogue during sex scenes. Jamie Gillis looks like Rizzo from Grease. And it looks like Rizzo is fucking that woman with her big dick. Wow. Now that is an ugly O face. Finally, both men have climaxed and the girls are thinking, okay, what now? Jamie said, okay, it's party time. And the girl returned. And Jamie Gillis said, all right, why don't you two get together and I'm gonna sit down and watch for a while. So now the woman is groping the girl and they're gonna have lesbian rape sex. Okay, we know her breasts are soft. This is the second time she talked about the smoothness of this woman's tits and nipples. We get it. She said, no need to worry. Nobody's gonna hurt you, honey. And there's her pubic mass. There's a half hour left. Jamie runs into another one of the girls and... And he said, hey, look what I found. A girl. And he started rubbing her tits. Jamie said, that one's mine. I like it. And he grabbed her pigtail and he's pulling her forward. She said, who are you? And he said, oh, we're just stopping in for a little while. You ever suck a cock? Do just what I say and I'm not gonna hurt you. I love Jamie Gillis because he's mean, sick, fucked up, and great. Now there's a legend that Jamie Gillis is in a movie called The Human Toilet Bowl? The Walking Toilet Bowl, The Human Toilet Bowl. I'm not exactly sure because it's impossible to find, but in it, supposedly he's worse than contusion, mean as fucking shit, and it's called The Human Toilet Bowl. What the fuck's going on there? I have wanted to see that for so long but it's just notoriously hard to find. And like I said, some people think it's a legend. He took it out and he said, come on, honey, put it in your mouth. And he's got her by the pigtails. He said, I don't want to hurt you, baby. I don't want to hurt you. You don't want me to beat you up, do you? You wouldn't want me to cut your face, would you, honey? Well, I have to do that if you don't do what I say. He is so fucked up. He keeps threatening to knock all her teeth out. Uh, Jamie says, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you if you don't fucking suck his dick now. I mean, Jamie is just running the show. I don't think he was being instructed by the director. I think he was just hired for the movie to do his own thing. I mean, these lines were not in the script. He's such a good actor because he's not acting. He's into telling girls what to do and making them feel horrible and smacking them. It's very real. He looked and he said, are you sucking on it? He wants you to lick it. Lick it, bitch. Oh, he's got a belt around her neck now. And he said, come on, baby, you're enjoying that too much. Take your clothes off. And in the other room, the girl in the green is like, you're not like the other guys. And she's trying to talk him out of the group and trying to get him to save her. A romance develops between these two and the guy says, you're right, I'm gonna leave the gang tonight. And they kiss. What? Who are these? What's happening here? Who are these? Mm, I don't know. One moment, please, while we change reels. Never seen that. Now that guy's fucking that bitch. I'm trying to be PC. So he pulled it out and his dick is doing what dicks do. Yes! Puking out white shit. That night, the two escape, leaving Jamie and the gang behind, and... And the end. Uh, hi, excuse me, I have a question. Where's the ending? Let's put on Christopher Rage's music while we talk about this. So this movie doesn't have an ending. We have no idea what's going on inside the cabin. They just leave and it's done. So the whole Jamie Gillis, the rape, all of that fun stuff, we just kind of drop it and suddenly we have two heroes and that's it. I just thought it was boring and I didn't like it. I didn't care for this movie, but it did have its fun parts. You know, the whole oatmeal scene, I loved. You know, I found myself checking the time a lot, thinking, how much time is left? So what do I give Winter Heat on a scale of one to five? Well, I'd have to give it a one. It would be a zero if it wasn't for the oatmeal. 
I love Jamie Gillis, but this isn't his best work. Jamie was rough in this, but not as rough as he could have been or has been in other movies, especially The Human Toilet Bowl, where he's supposedly purely evil. Christopher Rage, stop with the fucking symbols! Did he hire a marching band, or did he just go down to the streets and sing in front of one? Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.